Hello my lovelies. Today we are going to drive around some country roads and learn a little about the differences between country life, city life, and suburban life. I think there are distinct differences between the three while a lot of people consider city life and suburban life the same thing. Of course, we have to understand that cities come in many sizes. In Alabama, where I live, the designation of city or town is based on population. Any municipality with a population of up to 1,999 people is considered a town. If the municipality has 2,000 or more residents, then it is a city. I live outside of a town and the closest city by Alabama's population definition is about 12 miles away. The population of that city is 2,800. Technically it is a city, but most people think of it as a rural area as opposed to urban. So I think we have to take that into consideration. Rural is accepted to mean any area where there are less than 500 people living per square mile and towns or cities with fewer than 2,500 people. However, there are suburban cities with populations of 2,300 that are part of the metropolitan areas and they don't look very rural. So finding an objective definition for these four terms in a way that most people can visualize is a little tricky. Before we go any farther, I'd just like to say, welcome to Cape Bonnie Country. Thank you so much for stopping by. This channel is not possible without viewer support, so please remember to like this video, subscribe and get notified, comment, and share with your friends and family. For the purpose of my videos, we are going to go with the terms country, city, and suburban. Country means an area with less than 500 people per square mile or towns and small cities with fewer than 10,000 people. City will be used to mean any municipality that has a population of 50,000 or more and a public transportation system. Suburban will apply to those municipalities with more than 10,000 people but not meeting the definition of a city. I've lived in all three types of places, and each one comes with advantages and disadvantages. One thing I noticed driving down country roads is that some people leave their garbage bins at the end of the driveway all week. There aren't any city ordinances or HOAs telling people what times they are allowed to have their trash cans out. My trash is picked up on Fridays. I don't tend to bring my can down the driveway to the house until Wednesday. If a single bag needs changing, I walk it up to the bin. I bring the bin down on Wednesday evenings so I can empty all of the trash cans into it and grab any other things that might need to go. One of my neighbors has a half mile long driveway that goes uphill to his house. He hooks his bins to his bumpers and brings them to the road at 7 o'clock Thursday night and then stops after work Friday to hook them up and haul them back up the hill. Most city folks live in apartments and throw their trash in a dumpster or they live in a neighborhood where the city tells them when to put the bins out and bring them in. If you live in the suburbs, you might have an HOA that tells you when to put them out, when to bring them in, and where to keep them in between. You might also notice that there are no recycling bins in the country. You see, garbage collection companies charge to pick up recyclables and then sell those recyclables to recycling plants. They make a lot of money from both ends when they pick up in cities and suburban areas. However, there aren't as many people generating as many recyclables in the country. They charge country folks more to pick up the recyclables than city folks or suburbanites, but they don't get enough recyclables to make money from the other end of the equation. So most country municipalities and counties do not require recycling. So most country folks throw everything in the common trash or collect bags and bags of recyclables before driving them to the closest recycling center. 
I would have to drive nine miles to recycle aluminum cans. Luckily, there is a local charity that recycles them for cash. So I collect them and drive three miles to their drop-off point once a month. The closest recycling center for plastics and newspapers are 23 miles and 31 miles respectively. I buy things in cardboard containers when possible, reuse whatever I can, and the rest goes in the regular trash. The county landfill is operated by a waste management company, but I don't know if they go through all of it to pull the recyclables out or not. That's probably enough trash talk. I know, bad pun. Another thing you don't see much of in the country is homeowners associations, HOAs. They do exist, but they seem to be rare. Most country people like having the final say in what they do on and with their property. Hunters dress their deer, turkeys, and whatever else they kill in their front yards. They park their campers alongside the house. They add sheds and outbuildings when they want to build a place to do woodworking, automotive repairs, or add storage space. Many have vegetable gardens in the front yard and let the dogs run in the backyard. Some plant their lawns in clover and alfalfa so the deer and other wildlife will come up into the yards to eat. Savvy hunters know that you can't fire a rifle when there are occupied buildings nearby, so they will hunt the deer that come up to graze using bows and arrows. HOAs tend to frown on things like that. I know of two HOAs in the entire county. The first one was planned for 150 homes. Only 30 were sold, since most everyone backed out of the deals when they learned what the HOA rules were, and they all just went, forget that. So you have nicely divided lots that sit empty. Of course, that made it fairly easy for the state to acquire most of the land when they needed to reroute and expand a major highway. Only two families were forced to sell their homes to the state, and they literally bought lots and rebuilt two streets over from where they once lived. The other HOA is not what most people think it is. The charter stated that the head of household for the first ten houses built and occupied would become the original HOA council. Well, those ten got together and decided that they don't want to be in an HOA. They voted in three rules. One, no inoperable vehicles may be in view from the road. Two, all homes pay a monthly fee that is used to improve and maintain the roads in common areas. And three, outdoor activities are not permitted between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Then they voted to disband the HOA. That was 15 years ago. The roads are maintained and the neighborhood is a very pleasant place to live. Country folks understand that the original idea of HOAs was to keep houses maintained and property values up. However, we just don't think anyone should have the right to tell someone else what color they can paint their house, what they can and can't have in their yards, and what you can and can't do on your own property. In most suburban and city HOAs, you see big two-story houses crammed onto one-eighth acre lots. When you see HOAs in the country, most have at least a quarter acre, and some go all the way up to one acre. That is plenty of land for a house, a vegetable garden, a yard, a garage, and a work shed. Country folks tend to think that all that is needed from an HOA is road maintenance and rules that pretty much enforce being good neighbors. Like, don't have midnight parties that keep others awake. And keep your trash and junk out of sight. We don't want nosy people with nothing better to do issuing fines for dents in your garage door or telling us that we have unapproved trees in our yards. Heck, some people on one acre lots will let half of that grow up and go back to woods just to keep from mowing it, while others will devote that half acre to growing corn, tomatoes, and beans. Yes, our HOAs will even let you have a chicken coops and a couple of goats because there are no rules against them. Country folks still value the ability to provide their own food, and most HOAs don't allow livestock of any kind. It's hard to find people willing to buy into HOAs out here in the country. That's just what I noticed driving around today. 
Did you spot any differences between where you live and these little back roads? What did you see here that isn't found in suburbs or cities? What is missing? Let me know in the comments.